Hello all you people out there in TV land. My name is CB Studios, also known as Kurt, and today I'm coming back to you with another Ghostface video. But uh, not the classic Ghostface. We're talking about, in my opinion, one of the most underrated versions of Ghostface that we've seen on the TV screen. Not the silver screen this time. And that is the Brandon James Ghostface from MTV's Scream. Now, I don't give a shit whether you liked the show or not, that's not really why I'm doing this, because I liked the show. And I actually really like the costume of Brandon James. I think the Lakewood Slasher outfit is something that's really, really cool, and in the same vein as the original Ghostface, mask aside, it's something that you can put together with a very minimal amount of effort and a very minimal amount of money, which is rad. It's really cool to be able to buy the exact stuff that was used for the costume for not a whole lot of money. So, today I'm going to give you a breakdown of my Brandon James costume and give you an idea on how you could do one yourself if you really wanted to. I will be talking about some of the screen accurate parts. I will be showing off some of my stuff, which is not overly screen accurate, but that doesn't really bug me too much because it didn't cost a whole lot and this costume is really comfortable. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. What do you need for a ghost face costume? You need a mask! To begin with, this is my Brandon James mask. Now, I sculpted this one using the licensed Fun World MTV Ghost Face masks as a reference point. Uh, I actually really like the shape of those ones, so I decided to use that for some measurements and guidance, and then tweaked it to match what I sort of wanted with this. Uh, this is cast in a polyurethane resin. It has uh, leather D-ring mounts on the top. We've got these nice rectangular shackle loops on the top and on the sides and we've got a five-point strap system. Now, it's not super accurate. I actually don't know how the back of these uh, is strapped, and I really don't care, so it's not a huge issue for me. But taking him off the creepy foam head, it's really light. We've got nice mesh for the mouth and mesh for the eyes. Uh, I didn't bother dremeling out the nose when I went to trim these, but I don't care. Uh, it's all just been airbrushed in, and you can't really tell. This mask is also padded on the inside. As you can see, I've got a nice forehead padding, and I've got some cheek padding. So it sits a little way off my face and allows an awesome amount of airflow through. Having the mesh mouth and the mesh eyes with space around the side of the head makes a hell of a difference and I highly recommend it if you are doing this sort of a mask. This is one of the most comfortable masks I've ever worn at a convention. It's just beautiful. Now the eye mesh and the mouth mesh is the same as what you would find in a ghost face costume. In fact, it is the same fabric from an old ghost face costume because I really like the opacity. It allows you to not see my eyes or anything through it. Looks really cool. And it just, it's cheap and I had it and it's just hot glued in place. It's really nice. The leather D-ring shackles have been dyed and aged. Uh, they're just out of some scrap leather that I had. I've got these nice brass finish rivets holding the straps on and it's just white elastic. I do also have a little cam clip, this little circle clip here on the top and I'll show you what that one is for in a little bit. Now you do have multiple other options for masks if you don't want to make your own. You do have, first of all, the licensed Fun World MTV Scream Mask. Now these are a very, very lightweight vacuum form plastic. They're, they're very flexible and they're very easy to damage in transit. They do only have one strap around the back. We've got that nice Scream tag sewn into the back of the strap. And this little guy here was a, where have we got him? This was in April to June 2017. Now I've owned a couple of these over the course of the years and they do tend to just get damaged in storage and that sort of thing. It is a shame, but they are fairly nice for the price. I believe these were also given out as promotional pieces at a couple of conventions promoting the MTV Scream series. I love that logo up the top. You got the Brandon James, you got MTV. It's pretty great. I actually really enjoy seasons one and two. Paint job on these is fine. In fact, you could wear this with a costume and it would look okay. And it's nice and light and, and fairly basic. These guys retailed for like 10 bucks way back in the day. But nowadays they are very hard to find. They're obviously not being produced anymore, but they were available as part of the costume sets as well. They did a full costume through Fun World, which I'll show here. I've never owned one of the costumes, so I can't tell you on the quality, but I assume it's probably gonna be very lightweight and not bad if you can find them. I would love to add one to my collection just for the sake of completionism. I also, just before we go any further, will show you my custom glow-in-the-dark Brandon James, uh, which is again cast in polyurethane resin. Uh, this has a fluorescent green pigment in the resin and then a whole lot of glow powder mixed into it. It does glow in the dark really nicely. We've got that same five-point strapping and three-point foam padding on the inside. It's a slightly different strapping system because I wanted it to look a little bit more tactical and it has been airbrushed with black around the mouth. 
This thing glows like crazy, and this, once I get around to actually throwing it in a box, is getting donated to Douglas Little's collection, because Douglas is an awesome friend, and I feel like he needs to go on the dark Brandon James. Something really fun. Now, I don't sell these masks. There are multiple, multiple makers out there that do sell really nice Brandon James masks. The two that come to mind are going to be Ozaran, who I think you can find on Instagram, and I believe he's got a website, and then Clive over at Birkbench Designs. Clive is kind of the leader with anything custom. Ghostface has done a bunch of these Brandon James masks, has done his own glow-in-the-dark ones, has done some chrome ones, some devil face ones, just amazing amount of stuff. If you're based in the UK or you really want high-quality masks, go hit up Clive. He does fantastic work. I haven't dealt with him yet, but I'd love to in the future. He's got a whole lot of stuff that I really want to buy. The next thing you're going to need with a Brandon James costume is this. Just a plain black balaclava. This is just the first one I could grab off the shelf, but I usually use just a nice lycra one. You can pick these up for like five bucks off eBay. It's basically just a hood with the face cut out. And you just want to sit the mask over the top of that. And that's it. It's nice and simple. It's super cheap. Buy like five of them, so you've always got them on hand. These do go missing really, really quickly. Balaclava goes under the mask. Now you may be asking, Kurt, you haven't talked about the MTV Scream uh, series before. Like, why, why, how are you such a big fan? If you've ever wondered what this license plate is in the background of the shot here, this is actually a Lakewood Sheriff's Department license plate. Screen used in the show. It's got a little COA right there. And um, my good friend Douglas over at Drown Boy Productions, who I'm gonna mention a couple of times in this video, actually sent me a production used photograph from the series that's mounted in there as well. Eventually, I'll get the poster done up for in there, but yeah, I got a lot of stuff that I need to do. It's, it's on my list of shit. From there, the main portion of the costume is really straightforward. It's very, very simple, and it's fairly basic. Uh, we do need long sleeves, so uh, in today's instance, I'm going to use a long sleeve t-shirt. Now, it's been a while since I've looked at it, but I believe, according to Drown Boy Productions and his videos on the Brandon James costume, at some points, they did wear hoodies underneath the poncho for the outside of the costume. I live in Australia. It's fucking hot, even in the middle of winter. No. No, I'm not doing that. Whenever I have done Brandon James, I've either used a long sleeve t-shirt, like you will see here, just plain black sleeves, or I have worn just long black opera gloves. These are actually off a morph suit, but uh, Lycra just works. Anything like these sort of ones, all I like to do is just run them up to my elbow and you're done. This allows you to wear the regular gloves over the top, which is awesome. And honestly, unless you're going all the way up in the air, your poncho is not going to come down anywhere further than about your elbow. So it's gonna cover any skin that you've got. These allow a whole lot of airflow and a whole lot of breathability. Continuing on with that full black look that you have with this costume, no skin visible, but light and comfortable, and you're not wearing a hoodie underneath a nylon raincoat. Which gets me to the bean. This is the bean. This is the costume. And this is one of the things that I love about Brandon James is this whole costume can basically fit inside the mask and you can throw that in your backpack or into your suitcase if you're going to a con. This is the poncho. Now, they did use a couple of different ponchos throughout the course of the Scream MTV series. Typically, the poncho that is reported as being used is a U.S. Army ripstop nylon black rain poncho. Nice and simple. You pick these up for like 25 bucks, 30 bucks off Amazon and eBay all day long, even here in Australia. And it is basically a giant rectangle of nylon fabric with a hood in it and a bunch of eyelets and press snaps down the side. We have a hood. and a big rectangle of fabric. That's it. It's a waterproof nylon. You've got eyelets and press snaps down the side, which hold everything together. And this one on me from the shoulders comes down to about my knees, maybe a little bit further than my knees. Uh, and I have just this first from your shoulder eyelet. I've got the first press snap closed so that it doesn't billow around like a Papa Emeritus robe. This thing, whole thing just goes over your head. You have balaclava on underneath. Hood goes over the top. You're great. You're done. That's it. It's, it's real simple, very straightforward, very comfortable. Uh, this thing does not breathe, though, so you will sweat in this quite a lot. If you are at an Australian convention like I usually am in this, having a little bit of airflow is really nice, but don't expect to wear anything heavy underneath. It will get pretty uncomfortable pretty quickly. I have done one modification to this poncho and one modification only, and it is this nice little black plastic button in the top. And this is what is called a cam clip. This is a little plastic snap, basically, very much like a press snap. 
and uh, I've got the male version on the hood, and then on the top of this strap here, right here, I have the female version. So that means when the hood goes over the head, all I have to do is pop and press, and that snaps into place and will not move as I am wearing this. It won't allow the hood to fall down, obviously he's wearing it over the back of the thing, but it won't allow the hood to fall off as I walk, as I wear it, anything like that. Holds everything in place. Really nice, very simple. I got a kit of this for like 10 bucks at a clearance store. Just rad, they're super, super easy to use. Now I touched on gloves earlier using my full length arm gloves, but the Lakewood Slasher does wear different gloves and that's where purchasing screen accurate pieces gets really, really fun. The Lakewood Slasher wears Hatch NS430 Shooter Specialist Gloves. They are by the uh, glove manufacturer Hatch. They are like a neoprene on the back of the hand. And then they've got this nice grippy sort of rubberized leathery sort of thing on the bottom of the hand. You've got padding on the palm of the glove. You've got padding on the fingers. And uh, these are just really comfortable specialist gloves. Now I picked these up for about 30 bucks. They are very, very cheap, but they are the exact gloves used by the Lakewood Slasher. Now you can see here, I've got the gap between my wrist and my gloves. If you've got long sleeves, it's less of an issue. If you're wearing those long glove pieces that I was showing you underneath, uh, it's even less of an issue. They're really, really rad. And these are super, super comfortable. Lots of breathability through the back of the hand. Available in a bunch of different sizes. You can grab them on Amazon. You can grab them from your local army disposal store or army surplus store. Or if you're in the United States, probably even some outdoor stores are gonna have these sort of things. 100% recommend and very cheap, super accurate. With regards to the boots, I actually don't know what the accurate boots for Brandon James are. I do think that they changed a couple of times throughout the course of the series, but the boots that I use are just these straight off the rack, nice and cheap, tactical boots. I got a pair of these for my Scream 4 ghost face because they kind of match the boots that we used in Scream 4. They've just got your simulated leather toes, your nylon sides to the shaft, nice tactical rubber sole. They look really cool. Uh, these were like 30 bucks off eBay. They were very, very cheap. Even places like if you're in Australia, Kmart or army disposal stores, hell in the States, get on Amazon, get on eBay, any of those sort of places. If you have a look through the Ghostface groups on Facebook, you can probably find discussions about the exact boots. But I went for something that was cheap and comfortable because really nobody's going to be looking at the screen accurate boots. The only other thing that you're really gonna need to complete this costume is a pair of black pants. I just wear black jeans, uh, fairly slim fit. They're nice and comfortable, it means that you can just wear a black t-shirt and black jeans under this costume, take the whole costume off and all of a sudden you're normal. Really, really easy, very comfortable. So that's all I use for mine. Finally, for a ghost faced killer, you do need a weapon. Now I, for mine, use, at least at cons, my resin buck 120 knife and it's a cast off my legitimate buck 120 knife. Now these are fairly commonly available, they're a little bit expensive. If you are doing conventions, I would recommend getting a resin one or a plastic knife rather than going for a full metal one. But Brandon James's knife in the Scream series is not a buck 120. It is a buck 119, which is very much the same. It's a very, very similar knife. It has a shorter blade. I think this is a 10 inch blade versus uh, the eight inch blade for the buck 119. So it's a little bit shorter. You've got this groove in the side that's a little bit shorter as well. And I do believe the handle is ever so slightly shorter. I will eventually get a buck 119, but again, knives are not the cheapest thing. You can get Harbor Freight knockoffs. If we had Harbor Freight in Australia, that'd be super easy for me, but we don't. So I'm stuck buying the legit ones and they are a little bit more expensive. Eventually I'll get a 119, but for now the 120 does look quite nice as part of the costume. It gives that really nice big blade look. It doesn't look quite so short and, and stumpy, and it's a great option. If you are looking for a cheap Halloween costume equivalent for the Buck knife, you can always go and grab one of the Spirit Halloween knives, which you can see over here. My Scream 4 Ghosty is holding. Uh, I have a whole video on these ones. A lot of people have videos on them. They're like 10 bucks, big chromed plastic Buck knife looking knife. They're, they're great. That would be an awesome addition to a cosplay version of Brandon James that would not cost you a whole lot of money and wouldn't get you arrested for carrying around a genuine knife. All right, guys, I think that's about it for the costume portion of this excursion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck the boots on. I've already got a pair of black jeans and I'm just going to throw this costume on so you can get an idea on how it looks all together. If you do have any comments, please throw them down in the comments below. If you know 
what the accurate boots are for this costume. I'm sure you can tell us down in the comments. I'm sure somebody's going to mention about that. And I'm fairly certain Doug's got a video on that as well. While I'm at it, go and check out Drown Boy Productions if you do like the Brandon James costume. And um, let's get to dressing up. Let's see how we go. Alright, so, as you can hear, immediately you can hear me way better than if I was wearing a regular ghost face mask. Uh, my breathability and my visibility in this costume is fantastic, but I will say we're about 22, 23 degrees Celsius here at the moment in Brisbane, and this costume's already starting to steam up inside. It is designed to be waterproof, which means it keeps water out, also means it keeps water in. But this is my MTV Scream Brandon James Lakewood Slasher Ghostface costume. I really enjoy this outfit, I really enjoy how it looks, how it moves, and how it feels. Regardless of whether you enjoyed the series or not, you have to admit that this costume is pretty damn creepy. And in my opinion, it's actually creepier than the original Ghostface a little bit. But, yeah, that's my opinion. Thank you very much for watching guys, I'll leave you with some beauty shots of this costume. If you liked this video, please feel free to subscribe. If you want to see more ghost face content, I've got so much more of it on this channel. Please leave me a comment down below on what you want to see next. And until next time guys... Don't answer the phone.